We're live, YouTube live. Hello, everybody. I like doing these YouTube lives. I'm a big fan of Facebook live, but YouTube, we haven't done YouTube many, many YouTube lives um, that, we, that we have is done. We do many more Facebook lives is what I should say. So here's a common food ingredient that gets, that's known to be from America. One, and it's one of the most popular, right? They say that people love this. People love this food. Yes. It's calamari, calamari or squid. And what happens is a lot of all the stuff that's caught, not all, but most of the stuff that's caught in the US gets shipped to China, right? packaged in China and then shipped back. And you have to be very careful people. If you eat seafood and you go buy, especially frozen seafood, uh, if you look at the package, it'll say Alaskan Pollock. And you look at the bottom, it says product of China. China. Alaskan salmon, backside of the package, product of China. It just happened, right? It just happened to a guest of ours. It just happened to a guest of ours. Who was like, oh, I went and bought that salmon that you told me to buy. And it wasn't the salmon and that I told It wasn't the salmon But he bought a buy. wild salmon and at ShopRite. He goes, I went home and it says product of China on the He goes, back. what am I doing what with I this doing? product? He looked at me, he goes, I hope you're not buying this product. I said, no, that's no, not, the, it's not. not the product I'm buying. So there was a great article about California calamari um, from uh, NPR. This is an article from just a couple months ago, from that December. Squid is a big business. Big business, but good luck on getting local squid was the, is the topic of this. There's restaurants in California and here in, in on the East Coast in Rhode Island where they're catching calamari three miles is a dock away, five miles is a dock away, where that calamari gets shipped all the way to China, packaged and shipped all, all the way, way back. back. So And it's cheaper. And it's cheaper. So here's why it's cheaper. In China, it costs $7.00 to pay an employee to work all day long, all day. Round trip shipping on one, on a per pound is 10 cents. That's insane. That's crazy. So peop, people keep asking me, Marcus, it's impossible for it to be cheaper to ship it to China and ship it back. But it is. Folks, it's not. An average wage in these places is- They wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it, it right. Cheaper. They wouldn't. Companies are in business to make money. Now we're extremely fortunate because we have, we use a place called Seafresh out of Rhode Island and they catch, pack and ship here in the United States. See, calamari is a very labor intensive process. It's much more intensive than other than other fish. So um, it's cheaper to ship it. But so we have this company that 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 we get from that's fantastic. But it's twice the price. It's totally twice the price. You need to answer that? Yep, I answer, it. answer it. So it's tw it's twice the price of other calamari. And people are like, Marcus, you're crazy for paying that. I'm saying I'm crazy for not paying that. And I think every restaurant should be on a level playing field. See, here's what happens with these companies, that they they ship these products out to be shipped, and whether it's manufacturing apparel or whether it's food or whatever it is, they're shipping these, these products that they once were relying upon US labor for, and they're saving a ton of money, but they haven't reduced their prices. You as a consumer, me as a consumer, are still paying the same price wall the company is saving tons and tons of money. Why do you think LeBron gets $10 million a year from Nike? Because they're, they're, they shipped all their production to Bangladesh where they pay these women 18 cents an hour to make shoes, or China where they're paying them 55 cents an hour to make shoes, and they can sponsor LeBron and all these other athletes. But you and I, guess what? We still pay 100 bucks, 120 bucks for the shoes. The shoes haven't drastically dropped. What, what does it cost to make a pair of shoes? Two bucks, a buck fifty, and you you scratch your head and say, "Why in the world am I paying one hundred and twenty dollars for these shoes?" Because you're paying for LeBron, you're paying for corporate greed, you're paying for the advertising, and it's like this with everything: Budweiser, Michelob, all these massive companies. A keg of Michelob is like ninety bucks. A keg of Bud Light is like ninety bucks. It costs them like three bucks to put that in the keg, but you're paying for all those billboards, the team sponsorships. All, there's no there's no real economy in these products that, that that are being sold, these mass conglomerates. We like to refer to ourselves here at Aroma Time as the anti corporate headquarters. And um, it's about buying from a real company in a real community that's providing real jobs, that everything's that everything is right there as 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 it's a uh, as you can trace it, and there's no other like subsidies, there's no other hidden costs, there's no other million dollar ad campaigns that this company has to cover. We're actually paying for people's fair wages and real product that's going into the bottle. So when it comes to seafood and even fish, they do this a lot with chicken. They send it to China and then ship it back, um, and you know it's 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 really what's happening. And and I gotta I gotta. 
it's frustrating to see the American workforce. There's just two sides. This American workforce is just is just like dying off. People just don't want to work, and people that do want to work are usually immigrants that want to work in these factory jobs. So I understand that. Hey, the labor's not here, but let's make the labor happen. If we're not relying upon these other countries to ship this stuff in and do this stuff for us, or it, we're just put on big excessive taxes. I'd like to be able to walk into a store, right? Like be able to walk into a retail store. I've said this for years and say, okay, here are two pairs of running pants. Here's a, two pairs of running shirts. Both shirts are $20. However, I'd like to see a tag on there, made in America, displayed. I'd like to see an imported tag saying this product had to pay $8 worth of taxes to the US to, uh, towards unemployment because they're obviously they're taking our jobs. This is all corporate greed people. People are gonna say, oh, this is, you know, this is what has to happen and this is the way we save money. If you have people working, you have people that can be able to afford the products. I gotta tell you, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, all my running clothes from 15 years ago were all American made. I look back at the stuff and the stuff is high quality, American made, and it was over the years, it's, it's impossible to find a running, something, a running apparel or any kind of clothing apparel that's American made. But it's still the same price, people. They're still charging us the same exact price and they've shaved off 50, 60, 70% of their overhead. So that's the frustrating part. So of course, food is, is just like all the other manufacturing. So calamari, so what do you do for calamari? You know, the problem is, um, the problem is every restaurant or most restaurants are tempted by low cost food ingredients. That's, when, when you look, do yourself a favor and walk into Restaurant Depot, you don't need to be a, a member at Restaurant Depot, you're going to Sam's Club and you will look at these boxes and see these ingredients of foods which contains tons of fillers, tons of chemicals, and then sometimes it's just not even like artificial flavorings. Mm -hmm. And this is the food that they're serving in restaurants, that they're most restaurants, not all restaurants, but a lot of restaurants, that they're relying upon to turn profits. And I can't stand when people say to me, um, there was just an experiment that I saw done where somebody defrosted frozen fish and it says in the package, you know, up to 10% or something pumped with water. You can see that when you when you buy chefs buy products, you can see pumped with water, up to 10% can be water. The fish that was thawed had like a five, 10, 10 pounds of fish that was thawed had a full gallon of water that came off of it. It was insane to watch this thing happen. Um, so people, I guess the whole point of this is you get what you pay for, um, totally get what you pay for, and if you do care what you eat, you have to spend more. You just have to. But that goes with everything, though, not just food. Well, while well, you I mean, were gone, we I was talk, talking about clothing. We talk about food, right? But but um, I think that no matter what you buy, the more you spend, the better the product's going to be. We just pulled in uh, some new liqueurs today and spirits sure did. from Don Chicchio in Washington, D.C. Awesome, awesome company. Uh, fennel liqueur, mm -hmm. uh, a Campari, Campari type, because Campari is a major brand. Um, and. We have another one here called Zamaro, which is a Campari, similar to Campari. Campari is an Amaro, basically. Mm -hmm. And many companies can make that type of Amaro, but Campari has a Campari logo, trademark, and or name. But you can buy many different types of, many different brands that are Campari alternatives that don't have the artificial dye in it. Um, that, see, when you make Campari, all these herbs in it, Campari, they, take, they actually take the extract of herbs, and then they add it to the neutral grain spirit. But if you buy somebody that's making real Campari, they're actually taking all those herbs and distilling them in with the neutral grain to spirit. So it's all being balanced and put in together as opposed to saying, right. here's part A, here's our vodka, and let's take a couple drops of this, a couple drops of that, a couple drops of that, and some food coloring into it. There's no art in that. There's really no, there's no distilling art. So just buying. When we buy stuff, we try to find small independents that are really trying to do the right thing and uh, and use small small products. I like to call ourselves an anti corporate headquarters. Yes. Remember when we walked into Oscar Blues like 2009? They had a big <laughs> sign up for anti corporate headquarters. We love their beer. And a year and a half ago, they sold to an investment investment company out of Boston. So we haven't bought any of their beer since they did that. And the reason why we haven't, we haven't bought Lagunitas since they sold 50% to Heineken and now Heineken owns the other 50%. The reason we don't buy those is because I feel there's small companies that we can support. That need our money more. And a friend of ours who owns a restaurant recently goes, oh, but Lagunitas takes care of me and I like Lagunitas. And we had another brewer that saw his comment and the other brewer said, Lagunitas doesn't care about you. They care about their corporate profits now. And their Heineken, bottom line. The Heineken cares about Which their shareholders. Which is the same thing that goes back to the calamari, the same exact thing, right? 
these companies are in business to make money, and the big corporations come in and buy them so that they can make more money. Right, more money. And they don't the care more, about you. The more they, the more they teach the small business owners about making money, right? The more they're going to make. They don't care about you. They don't care about us. Nope. They don't care about the environment. They nope. put on a show and say, "Oh, we're doing this this green friendly and that green friendly." A lot of these companies. I was at a clothing store yesterday. I found this very interesting. And the manager was going through. He must have been the boss, and then he had some younger people underneath him or or managers underneath him um a step down and he was walking around and he was like he was going through about the hangers right and what to do with this hanger and with this hanger and he goes well if it looks like this and it has a number on it you'd go like this and he took the hanger and he just threw it in the garbage rather than taking the number off he goes i don't want you spending time taking the number off just throw it in the garbage wow and i'm thinking to myself what a waste of a hanger what a waste of a product that was spent money on. So in his mind, and I heard him say it, it's cheaper for you to just throw it away and to buy a new one than to pay somebody to take the little, you know, those little round things that go uh, on top of the hanger to mark it off large, small. Saw the sizes. For sec, uh, one, two, three, four, yeah. It's cheaper wow. to buy a new hanger than to pay a staff member when we get to our dry cleaning done, which we don't get much dry cleaning done. It drives done, me crazy. We, I save every hanger in my closet. And we give it back. And a month later, two months later, I take a stack of hangers back to the cleaners because that all that's going to end up in a landfill somewhere. Somebody made a comment the other day about straws. To think that all the plastic straws that are served in restaurants and bars and in cafeterias, it's mind-boggling to know that 500 million straws end up in a landfill every single day somewhere. Yeah. And years ago, I bought glass straws, right? Right, you use those for but a long you time. But can't, you can't use them, they break, right? They're you not got a lot as, of use out of them. I got a lot of use out of them, but it's interesting how, um, you know, you'd want to be eco-friendly, at least most of the people who, who we um, associate no, with. No, or people that are surveyed say, I want to be eco-friendly. But it's very difficult to be eco-friendly. We buy eco-friendly straws here at the restaurant. Yes. 100% compostable, biodegradable straws um, that are made out of vegetable starch. Uh, they, they, you can buy them out of paper too. But for like one little box, we could buy four or five boxes of the other type of straws. Yeah. And here's where the unfair advantage is. The government, the government needs to do something, but the government doesn't do as much as they need to. But if nobody had a choice of cheap straws or cheap calamari, we'd be back, on, we'd all be on the same level playing field. Yeah. And drives me crazy when I see like in, in Ulster County in New York here you're not allowed to use styrofoam to go containers in I just restaurants. got a styrofoam to go container that was Orange in County in, oh, Orange, Orange County, County. Yeah, but yeah. in Ulster County you're not allowed to we were at one restaurant and the guy gave us styrofoam and I go you know those are illegal here and he goes yeah I know I go so what do you do when the health inspector comes he goes oh we have a we hide them when the health inspector comes and we have the other ones to show the health inspector and I'm just like like that's that's cheating cheating the system cheating the system cheating the system you know, it's the law. The government stepped in and made a law, and they're trying to enforce it. There's a reason why. And then you have these that. people that are just, they don't care. And this isn't a big restaurant. This isn't a chain or anything. This is a small mom and pop's place. They're turning around just, you know, if you get styrofoam in a restaurant, complain. I complain. I go, do you have to give me in a styrofoam? Do you have to? And is there anything else you can Is there do? anything else? It's the environment. Yeah. You know? And granted, the other stuff costs four times the price, but it's our environment. It's yeah. our health. Yeah. So... We're on about 13 minutes. Let's cut this um, YouTube live. Support local, support, support small. Support small. So you might have to spend a little bit more money, but your money's going to a better place. Anti-corporate headquarters. I think food from China is generally uns China. unsafe. And I would say it is. The regulations, the regulations aren't there. And all these companies say, oh, we have state-of-the-art HACCP. We have state-of-the-art this, state-of-the-art that. It's not... It's not that easy, no. folks. No. It's it's in, in check th where your products are in Thailand. From. You see these videos of people in Thailand where they're working these underground basements processing stuff. It's a lot of it's slave labor in Thailand in the fish industry, especially yeah. China. That might be more fairer labor where they're paying them, but it's still seven bucks a day, people, and they're cramming them into these places. Look at the whole Apple um, uh, factory there. That they make all the phones. These people are committing suicide. They put nets on the top of the building so they wouldn't jump. The, the, the intricate work and the long amount of hours and everything was making people go crazy. But you know, I mean, I wish there was a phone that wasn't made that way and I'm guilty of having an iPhone. But any phone we have is going to be made in that type of an environment unless there's something that's not, so I'd love to know. the things that you can. Yes. Because you, you can't be perfect. Right. But you can be conscious. Conscious. Conscious consuming. Yep. And I like to think of myself as a conscious chef, conscious restaurant. 
I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. And Jamie. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. If you like our videos, please hit like, subscribe, check out some other stuff. And, pass and it on. if you're coming to Aroma Time, say hello.